What do the Packers actually need as we head into free agency? We go through the roster and figure out where the weak points were and who the Packers are losing, what kind of impact that's going to have on this roster moving forward. We do it all on today's show. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet, and the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Trying to figure out needs as you do mock drafts, you go into free agency evaluations, that can be the trickiest part. And so I wanted to go back through the roster, look at who are the best players, the worst players, more importantly, and who the team is actually set to lose. What kind of impact will that actually have on this team? So let's start with the offense. And I don't think it will come to anyone's surprise that the lowest graded by Pro Football Focus, and I know people's mileage on Pro Football Focus grades will vary, but I think this is just a consistent way to do this, were Josh Myers and John Runyon Jr. And they weren't just like the lowest graded players on a group where it's really, really good all across the board. Although most of the other players are pretty good. Like Myers and Runyon stand out among regular players on this offense. Josh Myers was 25th out of 31 centers who played at least 50% of snaps. John Runyon Jr., 41st out of 54 guards who played 50% of snaps. Bad. Bad. Not just like kind of bad. No. Well below average. Josh Myers is under contract, but you're talking about a 2021 draft. And John Runyon Jr., is up. He's a free agent. I don't expect him back. We had him on the show last week. He was really great to talk to. He was very candid. I enjoyed talking to him. I don't expect he's going to be back with the Green Bay Packers next season. So that leaves a hole. Interior offensive line. Now you go, okay, Sean Ryan. Well, Sean Ryan graded out worse than both of those guys. And Royce Newman graded out even worse. Now, I think there was a lot to like about what Sean Ryan did in the run game. He is a people mover. He is nasty in the run game. Still working on the pass protection part of it. And and part of that is because some of the things that, that why you move him from tackle to guard is that lateral explosive explosion is not ultra elite. And that's where he has a tendency to lose. If you want to go power for power, you're going to have a hard time. That's a big, strong dude. But you can win early with quickness or with some sort of inside counter and then he can give up pressures that way. The pass protection is where he's still working to get better. And I, I thought it at UCLA, pass protection was something that, that you could say that's a strength of his. It's not just asked and answered that Sean Ryan is your 2024 starting right guard. I think the Packers are going to add bodies there. And I think it has the dual benefit of if you bring someone in and Sean Ryan does play better, maybe you whoever you bring in can play to center or Sean Ryan last year worked and repped at center. So maybe you give him a chance there. The Packers tried that with John Ryan Jr. It did not work. But maybe you cross train whoever you bring in or... There are some centers in this draft who I think the Packers could have some interest in. I wouldn't be surprised if they went that direction in the draft. So this is among the offensive preferred starters, clearly two players who stand out as weaknesses. And one of them is leaving. They have an in-house replacement. I do not know if they have the 
in-house replacement. So interior offensive line absolutely has to go on this list in terms of the guys who just didn't play well enough. Now, in terms of the outgoing players, we mentioned John Runyon Jr. After that, the only guy to play at least 300 snaps who's going to be an offensive free agent is A.J. Dillon. Now, he graded out really well ultimately, but part of the issue here is you have a running back who is just very different from Aaron Jones. He can do different kinds of things. He excels gap schemes, power, inside zone, whereas Aaron Jones can do some of those things if you want him to, but you want him on the outside. You want him running outside zone. You want him running crack toss, these pin pull schemes where he can he can either string it out and get to the corner or cut it back. He can do that with explosiveness and vision. We saw that at the end of the season. Emmanuel Wilson graded out much better. I don't know that that's the case, that he's a much better player, but the fit here is a little, um, it's a little wonky. And I don't expect A.J. Dillon to be back. I like Emmanuel Wilson. I think they're going to take a running back in this draft, but it's not a starter. It's not a pressing need. It's on the list, but he's not a starter. Now, Tyler Davis was a special teams player, missed the whole season, but he's a special teams only player Ben Sims probably just straight up jacked his spot. That's probably over. Josiah DeGuara is going to be a free agent. He played 212 snaps. I think they can find a day three guy to just go out and do a lot of the H-back stuff that they wanted DeGuara to do. He just never became a reliable player in any facet. He became a solid blocker from that backfield spot or as a wing, nub, whatever. But... Never never became a, a, a truly useful player in any one spot where you just go, okay, we put this guy on the field and he can definitely do this. The interesting one for me is Yash Nyman. He was 69th out of 99 qualifying offensive tackles. Just did not play anywhere near as well this year as he had in years past. And I, I don't know how to account for that. I mean, he he looked like a legit starting offensive lineman. There were times early in the season when I'm going, why are they doing this with Rasheed Walker? He can't play. That was I was wrong. I was and part of the reason why I was saying just go to Nyman is because we know he can play at a high level or at least a higher level. And that just turned out not to be the case. He or or he didn't. He just didn't. He didn't play at a higher level. And so if he's not going to play at that higher level, then you have to take that information and you have to say, okay. You are what you are. I think he's going to go somewhere else. I think someone is going to pay him to be a starter. And I think he can be a quality starter. The Packers developed him and he is going to go and and be good for someone somewhere else. When you look at this though, you're losing your swing tackle and you have, I mean, no one really with any meaningful NFL experience to put in there. Caleb Jones does not have that. So... That is a place where you go, okay, offensive tackle. Either they stick at offensive tackle and they can be your swing tackle or they push Rasheed Walker or they kick inside and they give you depth and they can be that swing offensive lineman, whether they're playing guard, whether they're playing tackle or not, they compete to play guard. You've lost your swing tackle. But that's why I think multiple offensive linemen are coming in this draft. Someone who is dedicated inside and someone who can at least try early on to play outside. Now, whether that's two tackles or a tackle and a guard, a tackle and a center, I don't know, but they are definitely going to take at least one tackle in this draft. I'm telling you, write it in ink. They are taking a tackle probably early because that's where you have to get these guys, whether it's 25 or 41, 57. This is just what the Packers have always done. They build from the trenches and they're just... There's not that many other places where you go, they have to find this. But interior offensive line is one, and then you have to swing tackle, given the injuries, and the Packers are a perfect test case for this. You know you're going to have to play these other guys, so you have to have someone reliable there to help you do it. We're going to talk about the defense in just a second here on Locked on Packers. The big game is coming gone. Long time till football. <sighs> Man, I had a lot of food. I hope you did too. I cooked some. We ordered some. Guess what? DoorDash always has you covered. Whether it's for 
the big game or just a big game or just, hey, guess what? It's Tuesday and I need some food. DoorDash is your all-in-one app for your everyday needs from restaurants to groceries to flowers and gifts. If you forgot, maybe Valentine's Day, DoorDash some flowers and some chocolate ASAP. So if you're running low on dinner ideas, pet supplies, or just time, you can get so much more than you realized delivered. Whatever watch party or anything party you've got coming up, get it delivered with DoorDash. Get dinner for tonight, groceries for the week, or a consolation prize for your sad friends in San Francisco. Oh, so sad for them. All on DoorDash. DoorDash, your door to more. Head to the DoorDash app to get everything you need delivered. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And it's now only available. Now it's now also available. Not only also available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports today. Here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, defense. This was one of those where when I looked at the grades, <laughs> I was like, you know, I know Joe Barry. It was time with Joe Barry. But man, a lot of these players just did not play well. Six players on defense. Six that played meaningful snaps had pro football focus grades below 60. That's bad. And and Keyshawn Nixon was 60.7. So he would have made seven. The lowest graded defender to play at least 100 snaps was Anthony Johnson Jr., a.k.a. the only safety on the roster. So if he's the only guy... He was, your, he was your worst defensive player last year, according to Pro Football Focus. So just from that baseline, you're going safety. But, but wait, more on that in a second. Because this becomes interesting when we look at the free agents. After that, Eric Stokes did not grade out well at all. Now, he was hurt coming back from injury. I think press gagged into duty before he was really ready to do that full time. But he was bad. And he only played, you know, a little over 100 snaps. So... It's a small sample size to be sure. That's it's just when you when you're relying on that guy to be a part of your core, and he, you have this great rookie season. You have this kind of disappointing sophomore season, but not being deployed the way that he really would be used best. And you get hurt. You have this devastating set of injuries, not just one injury, set of injuries. You come back and then you get re-injured. You come back pressed into way more duty than your body is probably ready for and you get hurt again. I think the Packers have to plan right now like Eric Stokes is just not a part of their long-term plan. Now, they can add that that fifth year. You know, there's there's time on the contract for him to still be on the team, but he's got to play his way back into showing he is a member of this team. Corner is definitely going to come up here. Definitely going to come up here. After those guys, Isaiah McDuffie, it was a nice story, but he was 60th out of 68 linebackers to play at least 500 snaps. 60th out of 68. Now, there were times when you go, oh, he's playing better than Devondre Campbell, so this is nice. Well, Devondre Campbell might not be on this team because of the cap savings that it could bring, and your backup is just not reliable. Just did not play well last year. Not Did not play consistently well. There were some really nice flashes where you go, man, that was nice. He'll knife into the backfield for a tackle for loss and, and look fast getting to the corner or something like that. But down to down playing and play out, it just wasn't consistent. The problem is, he's not the only linebacker on this list. Next worst, Carrington Valentine. 75th out of 95 corners with at least 500 snaps. Now, I'm all set on Carrington Valentine. Like I, I don't, I don't need the pro football focus numbers to tell me what I saw. The Packers love him. He cannot catch at all, but he is a dog. He is big. He is physical, and he absolutely looked like he belonged as an NFL starter last season on the field. He's going to be here for a while. I think part of the reason 
Not the only reason, but part of the reason that they traded Russell Douglas was they felt they felt comfortable with Carrington Valentine being a real part of this rotation if they needed him to be. Now, there were times when he got benched for Corey Valentine. I understand that. But there is a ton of talent with him. I, I, I Is he a starter, a preferred starter? We'll see. Now, the lowest grade, if you're going to go preferred starters, it depends on how you want to how you want to couch that because Jonathan Owens at times felt like a preferred starter. He graded 62nd out of 78 safeties to play at least 500 snaps. That's really bad. He had a nice little stretch of games, but other than that, not very good. Now the no doubt preferred starters, Devontae Wyatt and Quay Walker, your first round picks in 2021, 2022, excuse me. Devontae Wyatt, 45th out of 75 interior defensive linemen to play at least 500 snaps. That's like below below average, like clearly below average, but not terrible. Quay Walker, 54th out of 68 linebackers to play at least 500 snaps. Bad. Bad. Just bad. Now, you have Carl Brooks. You're moving to this four-man front. So... You know, the, the the body types that you're looking for might be a little different because you don't need, you know, the same sort of true nose as often, potentially, depending on how they want to play it. But the Devontae Wyatt piece, I don't think that's going to, I don't think that becomes a need. You always want more depth. Like, I think Kobe Wooden and Carl Brooks, along with TJ Slayton, along with um, Kenny Clark, give you enough on the interior that you don't have to feel like that's a need. You'd like to see a little more out of Devontae Wyatt. But linebacker absolutely deserves to be on this list because Devondre Campbell, he graded out pretty decent. I thought there were times when he played decent and there were times when he played pretty not decent. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if they decided to move on in the offseason. It saves them real money, meaningful dollars this year. The problem is they just don't have anyone else. Now, from what I've been told, they're doing plenty of work on linebacker this year in this draft. So if they can find someone that they like, great. And maybe they take it to the draft. And then they move on from uh, Devondre Campbell if they find the right linebacker. Maybe they move some money around. Because remember, we talked about this the other day. Every dayers will remember The Jordan Love contract can't be re-upped until May. So you don't need the Jordan Love money until later. So maybe you get through the draft, you get Edger and Cooper. We're going to talk about these linebackers at some point. And you can say, well, DeAndre Campbell, bye. That's okay. Now the free agency part of this adds another layer. Rudy Ford was 28 out of 78 safeties to play 500 snaps. That's a starting caliber safety. It's not great. It's not bad. That's a starter safety. And he ended the season hurt. So maybe you can get him back on a one, another one-year prove a deal. And in this new defense, I really like his fit in this defense. I think, you know, best case scenario, he gives you that, that sort of Talanoa Hufanga fly around and hit stuff kind of safety. Chaos agent. And this one, this one kind of shocked me. But if you think about it, because these grades include the playoffs... Darnell Savage finished 13th out of 78 safeties in defensive grade, including the playoffs. 13th. That is high-level NFL starter stuff. Now, he played awesome against the Cowboys. That surely brings the grade up. He played really well. He was, I think he was the highest-graded safety in the postseason. That, like, there's still, there's still something there. And I would love to bring him back on a one-year, say, hey, Darnell Savage, come back, play for Jeff Halfley, former defensive backs coach, play in this defense, prove it for one season, and we will pay you. We want to pay you. We want you to prove it. Brian Gutekinds, the guy who drafted you is still upstairs. He wants you to work out. He wants to give you your money. Come back, one-year prove a deal, and make your money. I don't know if he wants to do that. But it would be something that I would be advocating for the Packers. Keyshawn Nixon, I mentioned him earlier, 65th out of 95 corners in grade. If he's back, 
He's back competing to play safety for me. Just not, I just don't think he's a nickel. I think he did some nice things defensively. The best things that he did to me were he made some really, he he really improved his tackling and I really appreciate that about him. The culture, the return game, obviously two-time all pro. But I just, he's not ideally suited to be a nickel corner just from an athletic profile standpoint. I'd like to see the ball skills and the instincts and the playmaking as a safety, see what that looks like. Draft somebody, keep Darnell Savage and Rudy Ford on on one-year deals, kind of like what you did last year. Draft somebody and then go from there. You got Anthony Johnson Jr. I think that I think that works. Honestly, I think that works. But we'll see. Now, does he want to do that? Is the money right? I don't know. I I would wager that he comes back, but I would wager that if he comes back, he's not playing corner. Jonathan Owens is is a safety who is uh, a, a, a free agent. As much as I love Simone Biles, I think that one's time. I think that one's time. I just, he didn't, there was not enough consistency. He had a nice stretch, but overall did not think that that he was a plus player. And so I think the Packers are going to move on there. The last free agent defensively is Eric Wilson. He's really more a special teams player. He had the big play on the Keyshawn Nixon uh, fumble on the long return, recovered the ball. He was... 34th out of 188 special teams qualifiers. That's a, that's a quality special teams player. So if you can bring him back on a quality special teams backup linebacker salary, no brainer. Now let's tier these needs. Let's figure out most important to least important. Let's tier them. We'll do that in a second on Locked on Packers. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue, perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. And I also love the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. Room up to eight expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability with 284 horsepower and up to 7,000 pounds of towing when Adventure Calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, as we look at the needs, if you want to throw a, uh, an umbrella over defensive back, safety, corner, I think that makes sense. Now, re-signing Rudy Ford and Darnell Savage also makes sense. And then all of a sudden, yes, you can improve in the draft. You want to find a long-term solution, though you're going to give those guys a chance to be that long-term solution. You let Keyshawn Nixon come back and compete to play. I think those three actually have a lot of complementary skill sets in a lot of ways. Keyshawn Nixon as a single high safety, I like. Rudy Ford and Darnell Savage as overhang defenders, lurk defenders, robber safeties, I like. Play them all together. I like. So you you might just through free agency and and one little shuffle be in a decent place at safety. You're going to draft someone anyway. You're going to hope Anthony Johnson Jr. takes a little bit of a step forward. I still like the potential you have there. So then you get to corner. You go, okay, Carrington Valentine, he's got to take a step. Eric Stokes, he's got to prove he's healthy. Keyshawn Nixon, if we're moving him to safety, now you need real bodies there. So I think... I think when you say DB at the top, okay, but there's a path to fixing that in free agency. Bring some of these guys back and that's no longer a need, but corner stays there. Premium position and outside of Jair Alexander, you don't have a for sure, no doubt, 
10 pole starter and you need two. So at 25 in the draft, as we stand here today, I think I think if I'm putting money on anything, it's them taking a corner there, whether it's Nate Wiggins, whether it's Cooper DeGene, not a perfect fit at corner. Maybe you keep Keyshawn Nixon and you play him at safety. I think it's going to be a DB. There's not really a safety to take there. We're going to talk to Trevor Sikama next week about um, some of these some of these draft questions as well. So for me, corner is at the top if we assume some of these re-signings. And if we're not, then I think you can look at safety and go, this is a problem. If you just look at last year's play, corner is the bigger, the bigger need. And you don't have the path to getting better in the same sort of surefire way. Like we know Rudy Ford and Darnell Savage on this team. We know what it looks like when they play well. I don't know if that's true for some of these other guys. The next, and really the only other place where you're looking at potential starter is interior offensive line. So Runyon's leaving. You don't know what you're getting from Sean Ryan. The future of Josh Myers right now, murky at best. He's got to prove it if he wants to be back. He has not been good enough to earn a second contract at this point. Has not. So I think multiple offensive line coming. If you want to add swing tackle there, that I think that's fine. But it can't come for me before linebacker. Because McDuffie is a fine backup, but he's not a starter. Quay so far has barely been of starter quality, if, if at all. And Devondre Campbell might be going out the door. This is a defense that relies heavily on your linebackers. Now at Ohio State, Jeff Halfley got, got through with, with mid-linebackers. Now guys that ended up being you know picks, but they weren't incredible players by any means. So I, you would like to have, you would like to have some higher level linebackers than the Packers have currently. And I'm talking about starters. Starters. So corner, safety, interior offensive line, linebacker. And then because you're losing A.J. Dillon and Emmanuel Wilson, we'll see, we'll see. I think you have to put running back in there as well. They need some depth there anyway. I think they need some more juice in there as well. So that, I mean, other than corner, you don't really have a premium position need except for backup offensive tackle. Like if the Packers starting tackles next year were Rasheed Walker and Zach Tom, you'd be totally, totally fine. If if Sean Ryan is just John Runyon Jr. 2.0 and Josh Myers is just Josh Myers, this was a top five offensive line last year. They got better in the run game as the year went on. So, I mean, this roster's in good shape. There are clear places where you can point to and say they have issues. But in in almost every case, they have a clear path. At safety, Rudy Ford and Darnell Savage plus Keyshawn Nixon. That's a that's a nice path moving forward as a baseline. Like, hey, we know what we can get from that. John Ryan Jr. out, but you drafted Sean Ryan in the top 100. Third round pick. You know you have a plan there. At linebacker, you hope Quay Walker, former first round pick, gets better. You have a guy who's played meaningful football for you as a McDuffie. Has he been good? No, but he's had some flashes. You hope Jeff Halfley can maximize him, former former BC player. And then running back, they grow on trees. So go get one. Maybe get two if you need to. I'd, I'd want another guy that's got some Aaron Jones-like skills, some, a home run hitter if you can. And then it, like late on day three, some power back if, if you feel like you need one, but I, I kind of don't feel like they need one. I really don't. Like Aaron Jones was a pretty awesome late season back this last year. They went into Dallas. They went to San Francisco. Like I know they didn't play at Lambeau Field, but I, I don't think that matters that much. I think this was always the like, oh, A.J. Dillon is the Lambeau Field back. That's always been overrated. It's always been overrated. All right, back next week. Trevor Sikama on the show on Monday from Pro Football Focus to talk about the draft, the shape of it, the best best fits for the Packers right now, what he views as the Packers needs. Um, and a lot more coming up next week. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on all of the socials, Locked on Packers, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. We're doing all of it. We're doing all of it. Thanks to everyone who's joined in on all the fun because we're we've been much more active on the social medias. Go join Subtext. We're going to do some more heading up to the draft. A lot of scouting reports coming on Subtext. Scouting reports on demand, potentially. 
So go go join Subtext. You can text me directly. We can have some we have some fun, some conversations. Um, so go check that out. And anytime you want to come hang out with us when we go live, all our episodes are on YouTube, but also we'll go live on YouTube. So you can stay locked on Packers. <laughs>